thank you. <laughs> thank you for accepting this little challenge for the 73 questions. My pleasure. Are you ready? Ready. <laughs> Let's do it then. So, how long have you been a director of the, your modeling agency? I would say about 20 years, somewhere there. Um, I think Ben was about 16, so some, something between 15 to 20 years. I always try and remember dates, but... <laughs> what inspired you to start this company? Mm -hmm. I had a, a friend who had just started a magazine called Modern Elegance, and um, she was looking for a stylist, and my other friend, who was working as an editor with her, um, recommended me. I went with my portfolio and she took me on. I had a job and then I started looking for models because I needed to work for models, uh, with models. And um, what happened was as I accumulated these number of models, other people started like shops or um, advertising agencies started asking me for models. So I, saw them, I said, no, why don't I put them into a, a, you know, an entity? And that's how it started. And um, do you accept anyone to, uh, who wants to be represented by your agency or do you have certain criteria? No, we do have criteria, yes. We have diff three different sections in the agency. So main board, which has its own criteria, talent, again with its own criteria, and new faces, which can be a bit of both. So what are the three first things you you look for for men and women that want to be represented by your by your company. Um, you know there are the obvious things. So in the main board we have um, height, uh, physique, um, uh, good looking, ideally for both male and female. But o over the whole spectrum, I would say character is the most important because a lot of the time, I'd say 99.9% .9 of the time, the models go on jobs on their own. I'm not there with them. So I need people who will be able to deliver the job in the best possible way, be polite, be assertive, you know, have the best qualities. What can a model expect when joining your agency? Meaning, how far can you get him or her? Um, I think it's more how much the actual model puts in. So in my case, I constantly promote models. Um, where I, so when I send a model on a job and she, she delivers, she does what the client wants in the shortest of time, time means money, um, then you, she automatically um, can get her, herself rehired. So yeah. it's, a, it's, it's not just on me, it's also on the person doing the job. Okay. How hard was it to start an agency without social media? Mm. Yes, in fact, now I think, you know, how did we do it? I had help, my husband helped me, we had a, um, a couple of friends as well who helped us. Uh, you know, we just created the website and it was work in progress, still is to a certain extent. As a career, you had many. Uh, which would you say you are most successful in? As a model, stylist, director of a modeling agency or a fashion editor? Look, the, the whole thing kind of evolved. So modeling in my time was, was very um, short-lived and it was a serious hobby. Um, then uh, as a, um, a stylist, once I started working with the magazine, which eventually evolved as a, I evolved into a fashion editor, that's when it became serious because um, I was one of the first and a lot of people were asking me to, job, to do jobs for them. I remember doing, you know, I remember being asked to do styling for a rapper, a foreign rapper wow. who came to Malta, which was really, really cool. So um, I would say then the agency, it, it's all one thing led to the other. Um, I'd say the stylist and the agency director are probably up there. <laughs> Would call Malta a difficult country to have a career in fashion in? A career in fashion? It depends what. I think nowadays it's improved a lot. Um, so if you're talking about modelling, I always say to the models who come to the interviews, you'll never become a millionaire mod with, you know, doing modelling in Malta. But you can make decent pocket money if you put in as much as you should. Then when it comes to fashion, as in designers and etc., I think now, you know, it's gone a, a long way. We do have a bunch of very talented very people. Very, very 
In fact, the next question was going to be, would the model make a living in Malta? Not um, relying on modeling only, no. In your opinion, what age is best to start a modeling career? It obviously depends on um, the development of the model. So, you know, I've had girls starting at 13. Boys, usually, they need to be a little bit older. But it depends on the body shape, obviously the maturity of the um, model. I remember being at an event once in New York. We had gone to, we had a girl who, had, uh, who, who was going to attend for, it was called Ford Supermodel of the World, which was organized by Ford Modeling Agency. And I, there were 52 girls, amazing girls. And Eileen Ford, who was the director, said, which one of you is under 16? Walk forward. Well, about, I would say, eight, ten girls. What she said, eight, ten girls walked forward and she said, if I were your parents, you wouldn't be here. You would be at home. Wow. And I was like, oh my gosh. Because I always thought that the younger, the better. I like getting in younger, uh -huh. 16. 16 year olds, I think, are my favorite girls. But um, as time went on and my experience grew, you realize that there's a market for all ages. Mm -hmm. So local magazines, for example, prefer older girls. Um, but then if you're working with some photographers for editorials or for test shots, they prefer younger girls. So there's, you know, yes. there's ev things for everybody. Biggest achievement in your career? Probably keeping the agency going this year, well, last year, 2020, it was tough. Very true. Biggest disappointment in your career, if any? Yeah, it's misunderstandings. Um, I am very outspoken and um, I'm very impatient. So I sometimes, I'm sometimes misunderstood, yes. One thing people um, would be surprised to know about you? I cry a lot. <laughs> a lot. Describe yourself in three words. Um, loyal, ambitious, outspoken. Harder or minimalist? Minimalist, completely. If you were offered for the career change, what would you be doing? Yes, I know that word, that one for sure. <laughs> Definitely something to do with dogs. So um, I think I would like to have like a doggy hotel oh. or um, just, you know, to make sure that when people who love dogs travel or they want yeah. to take a time out, you know, they've got a place that where That is to... an amazing idea. <laughs> <laughs> Role model. I have two. Tilda Swinton, Madonna. Mm -hmm. Who would you go to when you need some good advice, some good honest advice? Yes, my um, very good friends, so primarily Gillian, then my other friends, Joseph, Chris, Joseph, Andrew, my sons, Dale and Ben, and my husband, Pierre. Very lucky. In your opinion, what do you feel has changed uh, in the world of fashion since you were a model to now? Uh, I think there are a lot more opportunities now. Um, people understand the word budget to a certain extent. You know, before, for a long time, a lot of people expected work to be done for free. And um, it's not the case, you know. I th I am a believer of everybody should get their due for mm -hmm. whatever they're doing. So definitely, um, people are understanding the concept of having a, a stylist, a model, mm -hmm. a director, a photographer, a makeup artist, you know. not the, the model just turns up ready and then they just give her a pat on the back. That's very true. But do you think it's actually easier to build a modeling career now than back then? Absolutely, yes, absolutely. Favorite spot for fun in Malta? Well, definitely somewhere out in the country with my dog. Mm -hmm. Or maybe if we're in, in uh, spring or autumn where he can swim where there are no people. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what is an item of clothing that you had longest? I have um, a top my mother used to wear uh, since when she was about 20. Wow. Yes, I still have it. <laughs> have you ever read something on social media that was not actually true about you? But no, thinking about it, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't think so. I mean, 
I have a bit of a scary image, so not a lot of people would tell me what they really think to my face, you know, <laughs> neither on social media, so... Yeah. Even though you always mention, but it's very true. A person you would love to style? Tilda Swinton. <laughs> Worst fashion trend ever invented? I think, I think anything that was re is related to the 80s, you know, it was probably the worst decade for me. Um, although um, in the 80s, we, our influence, my influence and my friend's influence was Japanese. Luckily, we kind of went that way. So we were always running around in black stuff, you know, Yoji Yamamoto, Com de Garçon. But I would say the rest of the 80s was quite dodgy. A project you loved working on? I like working on all the fashion shows that I get to do because what the first thing I tell a client when they ask me to do something is listen this is your the project that you've created but until I'm working on it it's mine and I like to make it mine because I put my heart and my soul into it so I, I really like all the shows and all the shoots that I um, work on but my you know what I have to heart is I've mentioned it before when I had to style for a foreign rapper on a film and uh, he had a, a boiler, a boiler suit, and which he wore almost throughout. And then he came to me and he said, "I want you to make this looking different." Okay, I want to. So I just, I said, "Okay, take it off." And I just tied it around his waist, so he was. It looked like pants uh -huh. and um, a knot here. Yeah? And he was like, "Oh my God, this is brilliant! This is so cool!" Is it? <laughs> and I literally thought of it on the spot in that second, you know. So. <laughs> You as a very very confident person has there been a time in your life where you weren't so upfront and confident the only time i lose my confidence is when my children are playing football my sons are playing football really? <laughs> from when they were young up to this very day i mean to the to, to, to the extent that sometimes i can't stand on my two feet really? yes i get very excited i become nauseous i get very very emotional and one time Dale my younger had a um, uh, final he was captain and I just couldn't stand up throughout the whole 90 minutes I had to crouch down and hold on to the wow. radio unforgettable destination New York something that you own that you truly cherish my cross here yeah, which is um, in memory of my uh, very good friend Chris who we lost last year Favorite local designer? Charles and Run. <laughs> Doubtfully. Oh, doubtlessly! <laughs> <laughs> Best decade for fashion? For me, definitely the 90s. Definitely, yes. What is the very first designer item you have ever bought for yourself? Uh huh. I, I used to travel with my mother. We used to go twice a year, we used to go to Sicily. And I remember the first thing she had bought me was a pair of Giorgio Armani. Um, Corduroy green pants, trousers. Wow! <laughs> what is the most expensive fashion item you have ever bought for yourself? The um, uh, Saint Laurent dress I wore to Ben's, Ben and Christina's wedding. Ah, yes, 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 that is lovely. How many pairs of shoes do you own? Listen, I'm not a hoarder, so anything that I don't wear, I, after two years, I generally get rid of. Um, so I don't think I have that many, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I never bother counting because I've got the ones that I wear and then I have the ones which are on the way out. So, but I wouldn't say, you know, hundreds. Unforgettable fashion show that you have ever attended? I went to this show once in London. It was in a theatre. I forget who the designers were. I, was it Alison and Anthony? I can't remember, but they don't exist anymore. And we were, it was in a theatre. And we were um, waiting for the show to start and a voice came on and said, will you all please switch off your mobiles? And, um, you know, everybody gets their mobile out, switches it off, waiting silence in the theatre. And all of a sudden you hear, it was the time when the mobile used to go, titi, titi, oh, yes. yeah, and we hear that. And we're thinking, who, who's this idiot who left his mobile on? You know, we're all looking at each other, wanting to point a finger. And it was the cue for the fashion show to start. They actually had it on a re recording. Oh, wow. Very cool, yes, very, very cool. Very yes. Cool. Leather or lace? Cashmere. 
In your opinion, who is the most fashionable person in my Men or women? Ron? And then me. <laughs> <laughs> what is the best part of your job? What I like doing the most is getting the request from the client and then sending, sourcing and sending the right model for it. That's for me when the, when the client comes back and tells me, my goodness, you know, she did or he did such a good job. That, that's, uh, I feel very happy. Really true. What's the least favorite part of your job? Dealing with people who don't know what they're doing and saying. <laughs> <laughs> what is something that you have learned from your children? To tone it down, because they're constantly telling me to tone it down and um, to think before I speak. <laughs> Still learning. <laughs> <laughs> what time do you wake up every morning? Well, because of my dog, he wakes me up between half five and six o'clock. Um, it's cuddles and kisses time. And we go, we get dressed and I get dressed and um, we go out straight away. Best special secret you have ever learned? I think the best thing that I've learned and that everybody should think of is that when you want to wear something, when you try something on or when you're buying something, if you instantly, when you're looking into the mirror, if you're instantly tugging at your, you know, pulling it down, then you should begin to realize that it might not be the right size for you. So it doesn't matter if you go a size bigger, you know, it, it actually makes you look slimmer if you wear the right size. Favorite perfume? <clears throat> Comme des Garçons, number two. If you had to name your biggest phobia, what would it be? Flying. Oh, I'm terrified. Lions? Flying, oh, flying. Oh, flying. flying. I'm <laughs> terrified. I, when I went to London to buy the dress for the wedding, uh, I was coming back. I was with Dale and Jess and I was coming back and we had turbulence. And I, I cried and I hyperventilated. And Dale was laughing his head off and he was telling me, but Ma, why? I am not going to get to wear this dress. It's a plane is going to crash. <laughs> I'm trivial. <laughs> so you do travel a lot, eh? so Yes, but very, re I, re I mean, I really have to focus and yes. prepare myself. Yes. Two major fashion hubs in the world. Which one would you love to attend to? Milan or uh, New York? I think I would choose um, Paris and Milan. If you have to have your biography written by someone, who would you like to write? My brother, Tyron, who's, uh, who writes books, but he writes in Maltese. Not, not but, he'll, he would write it in Maltese. Or my very good friend, Joseph Fountain. How do you think you are perceived by people? <laughs> Kiss, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably, um, you know, I get it a lot of the time. Once the people get to know me, Mom, but now it's a bit different. I used to think you're, you're so different, you know? But you see, I find that a lot of people are afraid of hearing the truth. In the sense, just because I say to you, if you ask me if I like something, that I don't like it. You know, it doesn't mean that we need to be enemies. You sure. know, it's an opinion, yeah, sure. so we can still carry on with our lives. But I would say the most kiss, hanti patka. The norm, uh, I don't think I don't know if they say anything nice. Oh yes, and Mataf <laughs> Tilbes. <laughs> She's fashionable. <laughs> so what is all in all? What is the biggest misconception about you? Um, I think the fact that I'm outspoken is interpreted in in a different way you know I, I say what i have to say but i don't really i don't i don't say it with malice exactly exactly so you have been married for over 30 years mm -hmm. what is your secret to a happy marriage uh, i think freedom you know I, I was lucky enough my husband gives me a lot of freedom and um we as much as we spend time together, we actually spend time apart as well. So, um, you know, we used to work together 20, practically 24 hours together. We've all, as we grew older, we realized that we needed to stay apart as well to make sure that it doesn't go crazy. I mean, 32 or 33 years this year, something like that. 32? I, I think 86, I think, or 87, I don't know. I'm terrible with dates. <laughs> 
How do you react to criticism? It depends who gives me this criticism. I um, listen to criticism mostly when it comes from my children. Describe us the most glamorous dress you have ever worn. Definitely my Saint Laurent. I love that dress. What is an item a woman should have in their wardrobe? Very, very good underwear. I can't stress the very. What is a subject or topic you would avoid at a dinner party? Conspiracy theories. What infuriates you? Okay, so conspiracy theories. Ignorance, lying, people who are cruel to animals, people who don't care about the environment. Oh, I think I, yes, I think I could go on and on, so I better stop here. <laughs> what age were you the happiest? Oh, different eras. I think I remember being very happy as a kid. I, I was very lucky with my parents. They were always open-minded. Um, so as a kid, yeah, I remember being very happy. I went to a very good private school. Then when you, you, as you're growing up, you, you yes. become a bit, you know, of a, 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 an idiot. Um, <laughs> then, uh, you know, through my older teenage age, age, so 18, 19, 20, I had super good friends, real time of my life. Then I met my husband and got married very, very happy. When I had my kids, very, very happy. And then as you grow older, sort of the happiness is <laughs> gets further apart, you know? But it's a different thing. <laughs> what is the best memories of when your boys were young? Oh, I used, to love, I used to go to every training session that they had. I'm a real football freak, hooligan mum. <laughs> um, and I just love watching them play football. They're both very, very good at it. And I, I just love sports. I, sports days. I used to walk, go into their parents' day. The first teacher I used to go to was the PE the teacher. What do you miss the most of when they were young? That I used to see them every day. They were with me every day. And um, I, just, they, I just love being with them. I mean, they make me so happy. And the thing that I love the most is before all this craziness that we're going through, we used to travel to get, we traveled together once or twice a year, just the three of us. Ah, oh, that's really nice, eh? Ah, oh, ecstasy, heaven. Do you still have pet names for your son? No, I, I don't think I ever had a pet name for either of them, but sometimes Dale, we call him Daily. <laughs> would you think you would have been a different mom if you had girls instead of boys? I don't think so, because my character is, is what it is, but I definitely would have driven a girl crazy if I had <laughs> girls. Um, I always wanted to have boys. So, really? Um, yes. So you were very lucky. Yes. <laughs> Tell us one thing. Uh, each your son's done made you really, really proud of their achievement. Um, ben is... Look, both of them were very good at sports. They were good at academics um, but th what I love mostly about them is that they are they're streetwise and they are very very nice people they definitely didn't get it from me <laughs> <laughs> no seriously they're just um, very respectful and um, they listen to they, I, I'm, I'm, I feel I'm really blessed um, with them Obviously, Ben's success is really nice to watch. Dale has his master's in sports and nutrition, so I feel I'm super blessed and really lucky. Title to the year 2020. For me, the year that every single thing in my life turned upside down. True, very true for most people. You are a very well-known character, very popular personality here in Malta. What do you think that gained you your popularity? Probably um, the fact that, I mean, everybody loves fashion in Malta, you know, so I got a, a reputation, I, I, I built a reputation, um, so that must have something to do with it. And I guess to a certain extent, the fact that I am very outspoken, so some people recognize it that 
what you see is what you get and they like it, you know, well, obviously there are a few who don't, but they're still curious. Very true. Your worst habit? Biting my nails. You do? Mm. <laughs> During football? <laughs> <laughs> Most of them were the Maltese. He. <laughs> How do you usually spend a relaxing day off? Oh, definitely I get my dog Dobie, put him in the car and just drive somewhere and let's see him run or if we meet other dogs that he gets on with and he plays with them. It is one of the things which makes me extremely happy nowadays is when I see dogs play together, getting on and play together. It is a nice thing. Yes. Indeed. What advice would you give your 20-year-old self? Study more. Definitely, study more. We're at number 71. Now we've done really well. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to start your career now, would you make the same choices? Yes. Um, I'm very happy with what I have done and what I've achieved. But I would have liked to study more. For example, um, do something about the uh, history of fashion or history of art. I mean, it's never too late, I suppose. I can. So, Recently, I told the person who came to fix my dishwasher, I wish I listened to my grandfather, who was an electrician. You know, <laughs> so I could fix my own dishwasher and not get anyone else. <laughs> Very true. What advice would you give to a person who is starting their modeling career presently? Look, the first, the most important thing is to be true to yourself. You know, you need to, as a, whatever job you do, there's a criteria. So if you don't, if you don't have all the criteria, then you need to accept, understand, and accept that you're not cut out for it. I always say, and this might sound cruel, but this is what I think: that just because your aunt tells you that you have beautiful blue eyes, but you're four foot ten, you cannot model. You know, you might be able to do something for as beauty, but in the agency, we like to take. Um, the, the models who can do a lot of work and not just one bit of work, you know, the more they, they can work, the better for them and for me, obviously. Very true. So because be true to yourself. That's very, very important in life, really. Very true. Last question. What is your biggest goal for 2021? Oh, to take it easier. <laughs> I, I would like to... Um, become more aware and um, start recognizing gratitude because, you know, and mostly to live one day at a time. I've spent practically all my life planning ahead. And next week, the one, you know, trying to live one day at a time and being very grateful. Very true. That was the 73rd question. Well done. Thank you. We have a bonus question. All right. One my husband asked. <laughs> so. I get to say something now. <laughs> Are you following? MTL TV on social media? No. <laughs> she is outspoken, so no. Thank you. I so can. <laughs> Thank you so much for welcome. taking the time for uh -huh. your busy life. Thank and you. And we do appreciate it. And wish you all the luck for 2021. You and your sons and your husbands. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank Thanks you. a lot.